morning students, you are welcome to Pusasek online class. And uh, this morning, we want to look at uh, biology. And particularly, uh, I would like us to look at uh, a topic called variations in population. Variation in populations. Variation in populations. Um, there are two words in this topic that we need to give meaning to. The first one is variation. The second one is uh, population. Now, let's first of all look at the word population. In biology, population refers to organisms of the same species that are actually staying together in a particular habitat. In other words, when we talk of population of organisms, we are talking about organisms of the same species. If you have man, for example, and goat, the, these two organisms, they are organisms, they are animals but they are not of the same species. So when we talk of population, we can talk about, about population of human beings, we can talk about population of goats, because goats, you know, are the same kind. But we do not talk about population of maybe a particular plant and the other plant. Maybe we talk about population of water leaf plant and the uh, spear grass. We don't talk about population of those two different species together. But when we talk about population, we are talking about a particular species of organism living in a particular place. Now, talking about uh, variation. Variation refers to differences that exist in the structures that is part of the body of organisms of the same species. Variation refers to differences. These differences will be in the external features of their body and uh, it will also be in their physiology. That is things that uh, goes on, the processes that goes on in their body. Now, we are looking at this topic because it takes the importance, it makes us to understand the importance of, you know, survival of organism and uh, variation has a lot of applications in, uh, you know, in our society. So, in order this topic, we are going to look at, you know, definition of variation. Then we are going to look at variation Variations in uh, plants and animals. We are also going to look at uh, the causes of uh, variations in organisms. Also, we are going to look at types of uh, variations and uh, you know conclude this class by you know making few points about how this study is applied in uh, you know, in human life look at applications applications of variation applications of variation so we start from our first point, as I was trying to introduce and uh, mention that variation refers to differences among organisms of the same species. This makes you know us to be able to identify one organism from the other. Now, for example, we have variation existing in different populations of plants and animals. For example, as human beings, 
we have, we are of the same species, and even a lot of us have come from the same parents. We look alike physically in some ways. And uh, if you observe very well, you will discover that we also have differences. Now, it has been observed that among the human population, there are no two individuals that are exactly alike. It is variation that makes us to understand that even you mere looking at identical twin children, two of them physically looking very much identical. When you look physically at certain features in their body, both morphological and physiological features, you discover that there could be differences. It's not surprising that even in an identical twin children, one may belong to a particular wrong group and the other one may belong to a different uh, wrong group. That is variation. That means differences exist among the organisms of the same species. Now, it is not only in uh, animals that we have variations. Variations also exist in uh, plants. For example, I am, you know, I am holding a particular herbaceous plant. This is simple herbaceous uh, plant. And uh, these two plants are of the same species. They are of the same species. This is cedar acuta. The two plants are of the same species. But uh, if you look at them very critically, we will have differences, you know, between the two plants that are of the same species, we see differences in the length of their structures or maybe the number of particular features that are available. The number of flowers, we may look at the length of the leaves. If we measure the length of the leaves of this one, it could be different from the length of the leaves of the other one. We will also measure the length of the roots. We will also measure the size of the products of this uh, plant. So whatever difference we observe in this compared to this talks about the variation that exists between the two. Now, if you go to the market, you want to buy beans, you see you know, a lot of different uh, variations in beans. Sometimes you see beans that are completely white, others are speckled, the other ones are completely brown. And if you take each of these seeds and go and plant them, you discover that they are going to produce the exact you know, kind that you have uh, planted. Of course, these beans are of the same species, but they vary. There is variation in the you know, products from one to the other. So what are we concluding is that there is variation in plants of the same species. There is also variation in animals of the same species. Now, for example, also in uh, man, we have variation in the skin color of man, particularly the white man and the black man. There are genes responsible for the skin color of human beings. Now, for, you know, black individuals, there are two, you know, pairs of genes. Each one behind A, B, simply because these genes behave like uh, dominant uh, genes. These two pairs of genes control skin color in human beings. So, a black man will ask the gene for, you know, blackness of the skin. So a black man will have this gene. So the gene for the skin, skin color of a black man is AB, AB. Now by a white man, his own gene will be AB, AB, two pairs of genes controlling skin color. Now, if a black man and a white man are crossed together. If we have a black man and a 
wise man that are cross together. I won't be going into the process of crossing now, but I want you to understand it by mere fact that if a black man, a purely black man, marries a purely white man as it is on the board, what is going to happen is that we are going to give birth to an offspring which we normally call a child, we call it offspring in biological terms. They were going to give birth to an offspring who is heterozygous or detrait. And such people will call them mulatto. We call them mulatto. We call them mulatto because in these individuals, the gene for, you know, blackness of the skin color and the white skin color combined together. They are termed mulatto. But in the case where a mulatto marries a mulatto, you are going to have offspring that will show gradation and variations of the skin color. And that is what is responsible for most of the skin color that you, you know, you witness, you witness today. So these are some of the, you know, variations that will exist in both plants and animals. Now well, let's go to our third point. I believe you have jotted down the points that we have to raise. I want to bring these points up now as we go to the third one. We want to look at causes of variation in organisms. Why is it that organisms differ 